Hello, hello, wonderful friends. Welcome to another episode of Keep Your Torch Lit Podcast. My name is Sam. My name is Jack. I'm Sarah. And we are all here to break down another wonderful episode of Survivor Michigan, another crazy travel council, two in a row. What do you, how about that? You know, honestly, like five in a row. You know what? Every, every travel council so far has been pretty good. You know, there's been some more obvious votes, but yeah, definitely the last couple have been really exceptional. But as a whole, this season has just been banger after banger, I think. I know. I, I saw somebody on Twitter say something like, I feel like season three is going gonna, is gonna to surpass season two for having the best pre-merge in, yeah. in Call of Survivor, which, like, it's great. As much as I love season two, and as much as I specifically love the pre-merge, I feel yeah. like this pre-merge is just insane. Like, every episode... It's just so good. Yeah. I, I don't know how it's this good this early, but it's just it's just the way that it turned out. Exactly. Like, you know, I thought we had a pretty great pre merge too, but like we never went to rocks. We never had a double idol play. I guess we kind of had a double idol play, but one of them was a stick. But you know <laughs> We had that's true. We we had a, a stick and uh, a fake idol yeah. played by Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, season three does not have a showman though. Nothing not replaces yet. Maggie and Jerry. <laughs> not yet. That's true. Not yet. You never know. You never know. We have a, we have a gay straight alliance that is apparently voting against each other now. But you know what, dude? I was so surprised about that. I forgot. I, I didn't realize that Brady voted for Ben until like I saw the episode. Actually, it's funny. I was so I watched this episode with Ben, and Ben I can literally said, like, hear your your clickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm driving. I'm driving right now. I'm sorry. It's a car cast. Uh, it's okay. So something I tell the audience here is we are all three adults with jobs living in different cities we had to line up line up three different time zones to do this it, it was it was a logistical nightmare to get this going all i'm I gonna say her. is i'm annoyed af because i was ready an hour ago and these hoes were not ready even though we planned it and so now we're an hour in. i'm gonna have to drop early so that's cool i'm letting the audience yeah. know that y'all suck yeah well do we suck as much as it would have sucked to be sarah in this tribal council or does it, does it suck as much as to be Andrew Crouch? Still, mm. people are still reminiscing their fallen soldier at the start of this episode. Like, oh my gosh! Yeah, let, yeah. Let's let's jump into it because you know that, of course, at the end of episode three was like one of the craziest travel consoles. I know it was hyped up as the best in Michigan history. I know people are debating whether that or the it's Liz travel console is better, but you know, you, no matter what, it's up there. And there, the fallout was still happening at the beginning of this episode. Everyone felt so bad for Andrew. Like, besides, I, I never, well, I don't everyone, know did everyone feel bad? I, I think there might have been a couple of people who didn't feel too bad. Who, well, there might have been one person who whispered under their breath that it was karma and was actually quite happy to see him <laughs> draw the rock. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, like, I feel so bad for Andrew. And Cassie's like, I feel like that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, funny is the last word I would to describe, like, any of that. Ben, ben was pretty happy, too. Mm-hmm. Like, he was like, yeah, I feel like Sabu Sabu is like a chicken with his head cut off, just flapping around, yelling, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. <laughs> and then you see Austin, like, Sabu. My family. Oh, no, he's in he's in Rupert voice. Mm-hmm. The Savu Savu is, is my family. My family. The Savu is strong. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, and then Chloe man. Chloe's doubling down. You know, she's like, you know, I said that I don't like them because you know what, I I didn't like them, and they're calling us like yeah. mean girls and stuff. Like I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I I have a thought here. She said that, like, Emily called me Regina George, um, so I guess I'm the mean girl now. And she's, like, totally, you know what? I, I, I think I understand now why Chloe keeps saying we all the time. <laughs> and she keeps saying, we don't like you. We, we this. Mm-hmm. We that. Chloe is, is my theory. Is this just a theory? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've had plenty of theories over the, over the past years. My theory is that Chloe is possessed by Regina George. She's actually two different people at the same time. Whoa. And that is why she keeps saying we. Because Chloe is Chloe and Regina George at the same time. That is why she she said those mean things. That is why she's identifying so strongly with Regina George. We even we even cut 
to showing a scene from Mean Girls in the episode, Chloe is possessed by Regina George. That is my theory. Well, but what, then where does Lavana fit into all this? That's my question. So in the Survivor cinematic universe, <laughs> Chloe is possessed by Regina George. Yeah. Jo- I mean, Lavana. I mean, maybe Lavana had some sort of influence over that. Lavana, you know, can use her mind to do things, mm-hmm. right? But I almost feel like there's so many things going on at once. You know, if Mallory's a time traveler and Elise is a Jedi and Lavana. I'm starting. I'm starting to lose track of, of all of it, mm-hmm. but it, it's pretty much just this cinematic universe at this point. And then, and then Will's a gangster, so you know what? <laughs> we got we got a lot of different. <laughs> yeah, I got Will. Will's uh, Scarface over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. He's like, I, I, I the way he said it too. He's like, I, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm I'm talking slightly more like a gangster than usual. <laughs> like, not like you saying I'm I'm talking like a gangster. I'm more like a gangster than I usually. Yeah, am. like he's already like a pretty he gangster, but this is like even more so. And the, the way that he was like so self aware about it, like I'm sorry, I'm I'm slightly more like a gangster than usual. Like, yeah, I feel like people are, have been commenting on this, but I feel like the, people are definitely kind of like leaning into being villains on like such a large scale than like I've seen in a lot of. Yo, I, this this I think this is my fault to be honest. <laughs> Everything's about me. No, let me tell you why. Because I remember I sent them a video of, of my a compilation of my most savage confessionals, and I was like. Y'all, just remember, you can be as savage as you want in your confessionals. In fact, the more savage, the better. Like, I literally send that to all the tribes. <laughs> yes, and so, I remember basically, that. Basically, y'all can blame all the meanness on me because I told them to be mean. They're all trying <laughs> yeah. to reach the level of CRZ, but you know what? Yeah. It's good. That's a pretty exactly. high level to reach. <laughs> yeah. So don't, so don't think that they're all these, you know, awful, jerky people. Um, they're just following Sarah Z's advice. Yeah, exactly. So, but hey, it's it, I said in the confessionals. That's not them being mean to anybody's face. Mm-hmm. That's for entertainment. That's, that's so. yeah. That's the thing. You were very nice to people to the face. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You can be as savage as you want in confessionals. Exactly. You were very point. nice to me to my face, and then called me like exactly. an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the confessionals. That's the way you got to live yeah, your life. Yeah. Exactly. These days. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you see, Sarah Z would never, if it was like Final Six Travel Council, you, you would never say, you know what, we don't like you, Jack. Like, just use your idol, no, whatever. No, no. But in my confessionals, yeah. I mm-hmm. will. Well, see, you can't really blame Chloe, though, because she was possessed at the time. Like, she, yeah. she really couldn't control what she was saying. And she, and she wanted so, to be a villain. She had the villain's she buff, right? I guess I'm the villain. Yeah, that's right. When we, the three of us interviewed Chloe, and she was, was wasn't she wearing the villain's buff? Yeah. Or was she wearing the merge buff? Uh, she was wearing some buff from Heroes Villains. I don't remember what <laughs> buff it was. I know, Sarah, that you own the you Yeah, own you, own, the, you definitely own the buff, buff, though. Yeah, I own, I earn yeah. that I feel like, shit. no, doesn't Chloe have the, right. like, the black merge buff? I don't know. Yeah. Hers was black. Yeah. Mine's Yeah, red. the merge, yeah. Wow. Classic graffiti black. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. So... Where are okay, we can we talk about Ben's bamboozled stuff? The amount of times yeah. he's bamboozled this episode. He's like, the amount of steps he has ahead of everyone is the amount of times he said bamboozled mm-hmm. this episode. Oh, wow. He, yeah, if, if you could take one sh- take one step every time, he, instead of take one shot every time he said, every time someone says something, take one step every time Ben says yeah. bamboozled, and you're going to be as many steps ahead as Ben is. I like that plan, though. But, I mean, here's my thing. Why can't they just, like, message after the swap and be like, I'm screwed? <laughs> I love how he had to make it, like, a thing in the moment. Because Ben, <laughs> like, ben is... If you feel unsafe. Ben is there for the TV <laughs> moment. Right. It's like, you know that Ben is just there to make the TV moment. He made the moment that <laughs> we cut to... We cut to the title sequence immediately after he said that. And he knew it was, like... I've been bamboozled. He waves it above. To his be head. fair, like being bamboozled can't be just like based on a, like a tribe swap thing. I feel like that has to be a like, concerted effort by somebody. Like when I was bamboozled in season two, you know, it, it was because of people doing things to me. It wasn't just because of drawing a buff out of a bag. Yeah, wait. I wanted. I wanted to mention that that Jack, you were the first person on Survivor Michigan that said mm-hmm. that line. I mean, obviously, it started with Richard Hatch, yeah. but you said that right before you got voted off, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because I, I felt like I'd been bamboozled like Richard Hatch in uh, All Stars. Wow, look at all the, look at the influence yeah. that Sarah's having on season three. She bamboozled Jack. She's getting people to have 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 savage comments in their confessionals. Talking about the link between season two and season three, we saw Jack and Maggie show up. Yeah. In this episode. <laughs> 
And I heard I was supposed to also be there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, in my in my head canon, the two Maggie votes that got stapled together were both of your votes for Maggie. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I'm just like imagining it that way and pretending it's that and pretending that was what happened. I just like how we were so ratchet. We don't want to want to make new voting yeah, parchments, stapled. so we literally just stapled old voting paper together for the entire season. Matthew Israel. Yeah, shout out to Matthew Israel. Shout out to the lion himself. Mm. Oh, wait, 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 Jack. Who who is the one that stapled those? Huh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, who was? I think it was the same person who came up to Mizan. Was it? Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Who's that? Was it? Was it, was it Matthew? <laughs> no, no, no. It was Levada. Yeah, no, it was Levada <laughs> all the way. It was obvi- obviously Levada, yeah. you idiot. Came up with the name of the other tribe. And now came up with. <laughs> I mean, we've established that Levana is really the person that's been pulling the strings for yeah. everything all along. So at this point, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, we should get back. Yeah. <laughs> what are we even talking about? What, what what's happening? Right, so yeah. Sarah, you you mentioned. Yeah, I'm gonna take over it because y'all suck. So <laughs> we have this. We have an announcement that there's gonna be a tribe what? swap, and the way they do this is that they have people pair up by their own choice. And the first thing that people notice is that Savu Savu all paired up together, but Tormenta and Tafiti were kind of mixing it up. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. But um, then it turns out, surprise, you're going to be on the opposite tribe of your fellow twin pair. And not only are you going to be on the opposite tribe, but you're going to go against them in the Steal the Bacon Challenge. And that's funny because a lot of them were very un- <laughs> unmatched in terms of physical strength. So <laughs> like we had like Will Brady against two, like Jesse, like Brady and Jesse. Oh, we have a 100-pound yeah. 100, 100 Cassie against like Will or someone. But yeah, it was like, yes. it, was, it was pretty, I like how... They thought you were going to be on the same tribe, and then, oh, you're just pitted against each other. Classic amazing of views, confusing, confusing them once again. What was it that Sarah Minnis said? She had a confession where she was like, well, they got it. They threw a twist at us. They're always throwing a twist at us. You know? Also, what, what was up with that tire? Like, why was it stretching so much? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, like, our tire didn't yeah. stretch at all. I mean, you know, I was a little bit, I was a little bit um, disappointed that like nobody tried to choke anybody in this challenge, <laughs> like they did last season. It was much yeah. more tame compared to. I ours, feel like there's something the about bacon. like the snow. Like you, you feel like there's kind of yeah. like something that like if you push somebody, they fall into the snow. It's not as bad, so people get more brutal with it, you know. And it was in the daytime, exactly. so it was easier to see. And we were just like, I don't know. I feel like, to be honest, I feel like our steel of bacon was yeah. more exciting. But I did think it was funny that the tires stretched so much that, like, you could basically, they could both be on the mm-hmm. end zone with the tire and just in the middle. There were still a few moments, though, that felt pretty intense to me. Like, because you could tell that a lot of those people really knew that their butts were on the line. Mm-hmm. Like, Austin and Emily, especially, were going, like, really hard. Like, Aaron was going really hard. Like, I could tell that a lot of people really knew that they were in trouble if they didn't win. Which, like, opposed to season two, I feel like the stakes for the challenge weren't as big because we weren't like at a swap i i feel like so, but, I but like i we like, like, season, I like season, there was just like the whole all the energy with um you know bailey yeah. and everything after the jeremy but... yes <laughs> so no I, yeah. I definitely like the season two one better <laughs> but this one had like it's just so, such different circumstances yeah, definitely. you know i liked that austin was able to win yeah. it for his tribe oh, we're all yeah. big austin yeah that was surprising <laughs> That was surprising to me, and like no, no, offense, like no insult to Austin, but just that like Austin himself has said that like yeah, I don't really consider myself like a super physical person. Um, he like in the first episode was like yeah, I'm like the weakest person in my tribe. The fact that he won two points and also was like the winning point to win immunity for his tribe, like that that's something that I would not have predicted like before. You know what I mean? Before mm-hmm. watching this happen. Yeah, but the Savu is strong. The Savu is strong. You know what? He normally would have been in bed, having finished his Japanese homework, but he stayed up. He did the challenge. He carried it for his team. And this is this is awesome going into beast mode. And, and not only that, he got a reward for you know how much he put into it. Right? He got he got something out of it. I don't know why they would want to draw rocks for two episodes. <laughs> yeah. like yeah, I, yeah, want I, I would have a little like, uh, PTSD. Oh, guess we're drawing <laughs> no, rocks no, again. No, no rocks. No rocks. <laughs> no rocks. You just take it. Just take it. You can have the advantage. You know, <laughs> Crouch yeah. like visibly. Probably, he, I'm sure he he saw that scene mm-hmm. in the episode and just had a mini heart attack. <laughs> you know, 
had a, had a shotgun, shotgun, and a beer pretty mm-hmm. quick to to get it out of his mind. <laughs> but this time it worked out. I mean, Asabu still draw the rock, but it, it turned out better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about how the swap tribes turn out to be like very similar to the original tribes? Oh yeah, that was interesting. That like the way that happened, how like because Sabu, because Tormenta and Tafiti teamed up with each other, they kept ending up on separate tribes from mm-hmm. each other. Yeah, and it, like I saw somebody else. I feel like I'm mostly just like stealing from things that I saw people comment at this point. But I like somebody talked about how it kind of ended up being kind of like a Philippines esque situation where it's like mostly like two of the same tribes, and then like the, like, dispersed tribe, like, you know, the Malcolm and Denise tribe got, like, kind of split up between those two other tribes, you know? And, like, for the most part, yeah. Tormenta stayed the same, but, you know, Chloe was there and vice versa. All, like, although that happened, like, from what I saw in this episode, the dynamics seem to be pretty different from original Tafiti and original Tormenta. Oh, yeah, definitely. Even though, like, it's pretty much the same people. Like, I actually, I, you know, I we all helped produce this season. I, until I watched this episode, I didn't even realize... That the swap had happened that way is because like the dynamics were so different in the swap tribes than they were in the original tribes. Okay, something that confused me, and this came up kind of later on, was all of a sudden when Ben like hated Will, even though they were like working together really closely in the beginning of the season. Oh yeah. Was it just because she was getting like Will was getting too paranoid or something? Like I was kind of unsure what where that flip happened. From my understanding, from like the editing standpoint and stuff. The main reason for that was there was kind of like a couple things that contributed to it. The first thing was that like Will's paranoia and like him just like, you know, talking over people and he was just doing things that are annoying people, which we kind of saw in this episode. The second thing was the fact that he didn't throw the challenge when he said he would. And that made Ben upset. Oh, okay. And then the third thing, the kind of like final nail in the coffin was a part that Jesse mentioned about how Will was talking to Elisa and was oh, lying about right. it. Yeah. And, Jess- and Jesse outed him and told Ben. And that was another thing where Ben was like, wow, so Will is lying to me about talking to Elisa and lying to Jesse about it. And he didn't throw the challenge when he said he would. And he's just overall annoying us by, you know, all these different reasons. Like, I think it was kind of a, diff- a bunch of things kind of like building up. Ben had already said in, in a previous episode, like, how he didn't want to sit at the end with Will. And he was threatened by Will. I think that, like, he kind of had it already in his mind. And all the kind of stuff that was happening this episode, I think it's just kind of been adding mm-hmm. up over time. He has a whole damn spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. So, new Feedy wins, or was it Tormenta? Yeah, and, Tormenta won. And they're supposed to decide who they want to give the advantage slash idle clue. And so, they give the idle clue to Ben. And he immediately... Did he immediately go, go to look for it? Yeah, he went, like, straight from the challenge to yeah. look for it. And who wrote this dumbass clue when it hit it? Oh, it was me, Insider Info. <laughs> I, I, wrote, I wrote the idol clues for this one. Did you yeah, really? Did. That's great. <laughs> and I remember because it was, like, really, like, buried, like, pretty deep. And I remember Ben, like, I told him that, like, I was the one who hit it after he found it. And he was, like, cursing at me. He's like, God damn it, Jack. Like, in the producer, Jack, or producer chat or something. <laughs> And that's good though. If it takes you a while to find it, it means that it was a good clue because, like, I mean, we, he was able to find it, but it was also not like he just walked up and it was just like sitting on top of the ground, like Brady's. <laughs> and and also a fun fact about the that idol, you know where it's from that he found. Oh yeah, this is I, I this now that you mention it, this exact idol is the exact fake or whatever idol I found in episode one of season two in the mailbox, like that little thing. And I, you know, in the very first episode of season two, and I start singing the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it looks like an idol. It literally, it literally looks so much like an idol. And so uh, we use it for this season. You know, it, it spent some time on uh, ghost Island and matured into a real idol <laughs> and Ben found it. Wow. That's a, that's actually a really good insider info. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I I love that. You were the one that hid yeah. that idol then, and you wrote all the clues yeah. for it. Yeah, and it was the idol that I found, and I still have it. I got it back from him because I, yeah. it's, that's one of my favorite like little survivor souvenirs. That's that's pretty amazing, and that idol went to good use. Like yeah. it went to a really good tribal council. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. he actually used it to save himself, which I never used an idol to save myself. So. <laughs> wow. Who would have known that Ben 
that the that the fake idol that you found <laughs> in the first day would cancel more votes than the real no, idol. It canceled about. less votes, but it was more. All right, important. less votes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ghost Island is definitely yeah. real in this episode. We see the Ghost Island votes for Maggie. Yeah, the fake idol returned into a real idol, and the Maggie mm-hmm. votes matured into an extra vote. Yeah, but you know, there's still a little bit of uh, Jack energy in this idol because you know. Ben says that he won't tell anybody. And then what does he do? <laughs> Immediately tells Brady. <laughs> yeah. What do, what do we think about his decision to immediately tell Brady about the idol? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's always it's such a good idea tr- to tell somebody when you find the idol in the fourth episode. I think he's like caught up in the moment, but also yeah. it's good for building trust, I guess. I feel like it's a slightly different situation in me and you, Jack, because ben, Brady had already told Ben that he had an That's idol. True. So it was kind of like it was reciprocating. So well, I, I don't know. Also, I also wonder. Also, I think it's because he assumed he would have to play it this week anyways, just in case. So yeah. it's not like he, yeah. he wanted to use it for like future things. He was kind of just letting Brady know that he's like safe this week, I think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there's like definitely... a difference between like, hey, like I got this idol, we can use it like down the road and whatever, and then versus like, yeah, like I am gonna, I'm probably gonna have to play this this week. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Have we talked about how all three idols in the game were on that tribe at the same tribal council? Eliza, Ben, and Brady all had an idol at that tribal council. That's kind of yeah. insane. And Devin. Right. Um, <laughs> true. Oh, I'm so glad we get to talk about Devin. Finally. Yeah. Let's talk about New Tormenta first. That won the challenge. It's basically Tormenta minus Ben plus Chloe and Austin and Emily B. Yeah. And Chloe's like, I'm queen now. I hate the Chloe queen. <laughs> <laughs> I actually laughed at that. That was funny. Yeah. It was very that was. And when says we wear pink, Chloe, not green. <laughs> Chloe's, a, Chloe's a great villain. She's like, no day of the know. week like, do we wear... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Also, I think it's interesting seeing Chloe with Aaron and Emily because Aaron had formed that alliance last episode with the two of them and Brady and called the alliance the Brady Bunch. Yeah. We saw We saw. Uh, Aaron had written it on the whiteboard and chalk behind her for her confessional. You know an alliance is real when it's on the chalkboard behind you in a confessional. That's, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, I did want to talk about, though, like, Aaron, about the alliance. Is it, a re- is it real or not? Like, it's, it's one of the things, like, it's, I'm confused about. Like, what, what makes an alliance real? Like, do you have to vo- have voted with it? Yeah, especially, like... Because Emily doesn't seem to think it's real. In the game, I think you have so to vote hard. with it. Yeah. You have to, you have, to have a vote where you all vote the same way and you feel good about it i don't know i think the more times you vote together the stronger the alliance and the more real it is because mm-hmm. <laughs> cup because cupcake wasn't real at first we still voted together That's then true. it became real you know what i mean like i don't know i feel like we haven't talked much about aaron's game in general because i feel like aaron is someone that definitely knows the game and I, I wouldn't say that she's playing it badly but she is in a bad position which i think is just like a pe- an interesting thing, the longer the game goes on, and she stays in a pretty bad position despite not really making a lot of mistakes. I think Erin, it started off seeming like people just randomly didn't like her because she was like a threat. But now she's kind of doing a good job of getting in on some of these in- crucial alliances, I think. Yeah, and like, why, yeah. why does like Ben have such like a hatred for her? <laughs> why I think does he just, just like, want to like... Her- yeah, like, just, like what, what did he say in, his in the beginning? Like, you just want to like, yeah, s- like get her out of there. Like, you use some phrase that was just like, "Oh, it's Satan." Just want to throw her yeah, off his yeah, that, and that's like what it was. Ma- Matthew. Matthew Israel is like filming and like turns like in raw. Ro- they're like, both in raw. Of course, is Matthew, and, mm-hmm. and he like turns the camera, and, like looks at the window, and like goes back. To <laughs> I think no, I mean, Ben's just I, trying I, to make a TV. He yeah. literally said, "Like I'll be yeah. like I'm." great entertainment for tv and i think he just picked aaron to be the person he can have like the one-liners for (laughs) oh definitely like i i in talking with ben like ben is nothing in real life like he is in this game and what ben has described about it is that like he saw this game as like i want to make it as much like reality tv as possible we know ben he literally interned at cbs like he 
loves reality TV. And I think he saw this as his chance to be like a reality TV star. Like he is not the real Ben while he's on Survivor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so I, I do feel like that's a lot of explains a lot of what the things he says. But Aaron said some good one liners too when she voted for Nicholas and she went like, "It's ironic that the first day you start playing the yeah, game, and also the day you leave." That's a great line. That's a beautiful. That line. was such a great line. Yeah. We need to give her credit for mm-hmm. that. And her confronting Jesse last episode that was pretty savage. She got some good information from Sarah. She formed the Brady Bunch. Like, Aaron's been doing yeah. things. It just hasn't... She just doesn't really have a lot of, so, like, capital in the game yet. Or really have any influence on, what's ca- on like, the direction of the game. But, yeah, like, I guess, like, it seems like she doesn't have... She's not necessarily, like, on top. But she's, like, playing her heart out. And, like, mm-hmm. it's kind of... It's, like, working for her, I think. Yeah. And she, yeah, she does so, seem pretty aware. Yeah. So... Yeah. Which is good to have mm-hmm. good game sense, I guess. She she's aware of most. I feel like if she was on a tribe that wasn't Tormenta, she would have definitely, she, like up until now, she would have definitely been in a lot better spot. Mm-hmm. But Tormenta is just such they are overplaying yeah. by such an insane amount. Like Ben, you know Ben is I uh, hundred million steps in front of everybody. <laughs> like of course you're not going to yeah. be the same level of, of knowing what's happening. Like and Tafiti over there, you know Dylan's just chilling in the same jacket that he was chilling in in episode one. Okay, that threw <laughs> and... me off because I saw that and I, I thought it was going to be like a slice confessional again, but it was literally the, the exact same angle, the exact same outfit, the exact same lighting, but he was actually saying different things. Yeah, it was relevant to the week, and it was re- it really threw me off. I almost couldn't even pay attention to what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> all the all those slice confessionals were from the fourth week, or from episode four. And we added them into like episodes one, two, and three. Oh, so like we've been using that one. Okay. So Dylan filmed all these videos. His first video was in like week three and week four. Oh. So we were using all these week four videos in the first two weeks to like try to like build up his character. So that's why it looks like you're seeing Dylan over and over again in the same jacket in the same room because they were all filmed at the same time and they were just like thrown in the first three episodes basically. All right, let's talk about Jesse looking at Will's texts. I remember that was the one thing that I would do before meeting with people is I would turn off my notifications oh, yeah. so nothing Every like time. that would happen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Amateur hour. And Will just didn't notice. I Look, I do this in real life, too. Like, I play werewolf a lot, and my phone's always the one that's being used to do stuff, and I turn my notifications off because I don't want people seeing my stuff. Yeah, you want to see your premium strategy <laughs> for werewolf. Wait. You know? Yeah. Wait. That's what I'm saying. But Sarah, can... Can I read all of your texts? That's just a question that I have. <laughs> Could I, like, see your texts? <laughs> Wait, why not? If you don't have anything to hide, then why can't you exactly. just I just think it's, like, an invasion of privacy. Um, anyways. Wait, I, need to read the, I need to read this exchange between Will and Jesse. We have a chat, basically, called the Spoiler Chat, where everyone from Season 3, everyone that want, doesn't care about everyone Season 3 is talking about the season as they're watching it. And Jesse said, at William Bentz, when you read your text later, did it ever occur to you that I had seen them come up? And then Will said, at Jesse, dude, it honestly never occurred to me at all. It was incredibly stupid of me in retrospect. I don't know why. It's like that calming voice in the back of your head that tells you, everything is okay, assured me that you wouldn't be reading my texts as they popped up. That voice was a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, did Will, uh-huh. could Will even tell the texts are coming up? Like, you know, he's a, he's a really old man. Like, he, he didn't... Like, you know, I don't know if you could have seen those little things coming up on his phone. Like, I don't know. Like, did he have his glasses on? I, I, he thought they were, like, Instagram yeah. likes or something. Yeah, from the TikTok. I, I think he was... And, you know, he, does, he doesn't know what the kids are hip with. He might be. Th- he might have just been thinking about his spreadsheet, too. Yeah. You know, kind of zoning out mm-hmm. and, like, thinking about, thinking about aerospace and spreadsheets mm-hmm. and, and, you know, just zoning out. Maybe... And Jesse, I don't know how... This girl is so observant, I swear. How are, you know, when when I get a text on my phone, it comes up for like half a second, then it goes away. Like, right? How is Jesse able to like absorb an entire paragraph of like Aliza's like <laughs> words through like that text coming up on his phone really quick while he's driving? Like, this girl, I swear, she is has a knack for like kind of well, like she's just very street smart wait what, what, That's was the word the, I would use. what was the thing on her, th- her th- like sexy doesn't flow or something <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that was so great oh insider info lisa did and lisa's quote was not that she talks to will more than her boyfriend she actually said i talked to will more than i talked to my mom 
And I think Ian didn't he couldn't really hear what she said, so he just like captioned it as boyfriend instead. Oh. I think it's probably funnier. <laughs> best, best Did Elisa mo- have Elisa's- a boyfriend at the time? I don't think so. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember her having a boyfriend. <laughs> no, I would. I, that would have been very jarring for if I was Elisa, and, and that comes up. Whoa. And like, wait, this. I don't actually have a boyfriend. I'm like, Whoa. excuse me. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's true. <laughs> I do talk to him more I mean, than my Jedi- non-existent boyfriend. But <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> I mean, Jedi's are sworn yeah. to. Uh, yeah, to yeah. not find love. Yeah, right? to chastity. Yeah, and that's so, yeah exactly. Oh. And then there's like a Sarah quote that's just like a premonition. Like she was like, "I think I'm in a good position to win the game." And I feel like whenever somebody yeah. says that, like they're that's not- a bad oh, sign. No. Never say they're not survivor. Yeah, that was that was that was not great. I I feel like Defeaty is just like. Did you see? I I kind of like got a kick out of that meeting they had where they were like facetiming Ben. Like they're all so like they're also stoic. Like I don't know what it is. <laughs> like when you compare them to like Tormenta, like the Defeaties are just kind of sitting there. It's kind of like Dylan's like, yeah, I think that Lee's is pretty sneaky. I felt I love how Dylan was like, yeah, you know, like Devin, like I, I feel like he's you know not quite as scary, you know, but he had a pretty good diagram the other day. He was getting pretty diagrammy, <laughs> and uh, you know, I kind of I kind of liked his diagrams. Like I, I feel like Dylan just has this man crush on Devin because he had a really good diagram, you know, a classic Ross. Like he must have had some good like you know cost analysis sort of diagram mm-hmm. stuff and. You know, Dylan automatically was just like, you know, I vibe with this guy. Didn't, didn't he have a quote near the end where he was like, you know, if we can get rid of all the all the Sabu stuff except for Devin, I think we're doing pretty all right. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, is that how you like originally started to vibe with Mike? Just like going over like diagrams and stuff. I just feel like with those type <laughs> doing, of bros. Like, yeah. Doing, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was diagrams. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much all we saw with Tafiti was, I guess, that they said that they were going to split vote. I love how we saw Ben and Aliza, and Ben is just like, oh, don't worry. I can tell Aliza and Devin, whichever one that's going to be, I'll tell them that's the other one. <laughs> and then Aliza's immediately like, I don't trust Ben at all. Ben tells you what you want to hear. Yeah. Well, and then Aliza came up with that plan. Like that, I feel like that idol plan was like her idea. So she's, she's really good at this game, I feel like. Although it's kind of hard because she's kind of showing a lot of her tricks very early on. Like, it's better to kind of come out this strong, I think, after the merge. But, I mean, like, if you're backed up against the wall, you know. I know. Like, I mean, you, you don't no have much of a choice too. but to pull out She had tricks. no choice. You got to pull out it's your bag of tricks. Little... <laughs> you know? Yeah. That is tough. Like It's just a little bit bad luck that she had to show her cards yeah. so soon, I feel like. Should we, like, get into Aliza's plan? Like, yeah. That, that was... I love how she was just like, yeah, I couldn't sleep all night. And I just like thought of this plan. And I, I feel like she's been thinking about it for a while because I think a few episodes ago is the first time Aliza had the idol. And she's like, I have this idea where we can turn this necklace into a fake idol. Like she literally said it a yeah. few episodes ago. <laughs> it's a good idea. She's really, yeah, no, it looks really legitimate. Like, like it's believable so, that the producers would was, do something like that in a season like this. Yeah, it's actually amazing. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. No, I feel like they they played off that plan flawlessly. Like I, the first time she was explaining it, I wasn't really like, I don't know. No, I remember as producers, we were all like, "Oh my god, this is so dumb!" Like, how does she? Why does she think this is going to work? Like going to that travel council. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember us being like, "Yeah, oh my no, really? I was, yeah." I don't remember. That. I was actually, I was actually the one that was did that confessional with Devin. Um, we were in Ross, you know, the one where he's like, you know, if anyone asked me how long it lasts in this game, I'm gonna say day thirty eight. Because it sounds like it's like closer to thirty nine. That was. I was funny. in that confessional with him, and I was thinking like, man, this poor kid, like he's about to get voted off. Like he's he's a goner. Like I already knew Elisa has the idol. She's gonna play the idol. This kid's a goner. This plan is stupid. It's never gonna work. Like I was thinking that, and I was hyping up during the during the confessional. Like, oh yeah, like what what's the plan like? Like, oh that's interesting. I'm thinking like, not a chance. Devin was low key yeah. cracking me up this episode because first of all, the day thirty eight thing. Second of all, he cracks yeah. open that beer yes. at tribal. Third of all, when he, he would he was doing a good little act. I was like, you know, Kevin has the footage. Like Kevin, can you show them the footage? Knowing full well that we're not allowed to look at other people's footage. But that was just like such a good touch on the mm-hmm. acting. I was impressed. 
<laughs> like kind of using production rules like in your favor yeah I, i'm always for like i feel like sometimes it's kind of like frowned upon like i know in big brother like they hate when you do try to do stuff like that but like here i love trying to get like every like little advantage you can and like knowing exactly what the rules are and just kind of like working around them or using them to your benefit oh yeah and it all lined up so perfectly like the part that really sold me was like where he was like we need to have like the part of the tie where he was like yeah so the necklace on the idol is immunity idol and it was that was austin's advantage and austin happened to have the idol in his possession and he actually did have the idol in his possession like that coincidence just like helped tie it together so much because it seems like that's something that you know, that, that just seems like a real advantage. Like I, mm-hmm. I could t- easily see that being a real advantage. That Austin's mm-hmm. advantage would have been, oh, the necklace on the idol is a real idol. You need to get the necklace off of it. Um, I know Adam would would think so from Adam Klein. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Adam Adam Klein hook would have been hook line and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> and and Tafiti, like I thought at first they were going to question it, but right away Sarah's like, yeah, like that's a pretty good move by them. Like good for them. <laughs> Ben looks re- looked really pissed off. He was like, hey, "Didn't you say like good for you?" Yeah. Yo, I was digging Ben's outfit at this tribal. It was like very eighties retro. Oh yeah. Oh man, is that a is that a fashion? Are we hearing a fashion yeah? Icon? I fashion it's definitely icon. fashion icon. For yeah. Sure. I do want to say an uh, honorable mention is Dylan's wo- big like wool hat that he had at the challenge, like the Kobe hat. Yes, he had the Kobe hat at the challenge. <laughs> he he had like. He had a different hat on in like every video, but he had like he had that. Then he had like two different baseball caps shown in the episode. So he's he's our hat fashion icon for <laughs> sure. But Ben had the Ben had the full yeah, outfit, the full the full fit. Like he looked like he was about to go to one of those dance classes that they used to film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yes, <laughs> <laughs> like aerobics type thing. Yeah, yeah. VHS. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> oh, wait, side side note on Ben. When he after he found his idol, he said choke on it symbols girl. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was one of his roasts that wasn't that like it wasn't like a really vindictive roast. It was just kind of funny. Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't know. It had a little like symbol like sound effect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ben is sitting there. He's pretty upset. I, I don't know why he was that upset, because he has an idol <laughs> in his pocket. Yeah, now. well he's saying he didn't want to but, lose it, you know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's, was. <laughs> that's true ben has had a lot of up yeah. and down he was bamboozled and then he so it's like i'm on the bottom of my tribe this is the worst point in my game and then he finds the idol and then now he's in this tribal council where Devin and eliza have both apparently have idols now and ben is just in a whirlwind why did eliza tell ben the plan like before they vote they voted and everything like, that actually stressed me out. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. Because Ben might be on the other side, like, in with the Tafiti. That could have messed up everything. I think they thought that Ben was also on the bottom with them, and they really wanted Ben to vote with them. Because they, I think that from Lisa's position, she assumed the Tafitis were going to split 2 2 on her and Devin. So she wanted Ben to flip with them and make it 3 to 2 to 2. That was her whole goal was getting Ben to fight. Yeah, and, like... So I think that... Yeah. And I think she, like, originally, like, definitely, did like, didn't want to use her idol. So she was trying to get Ben to, like, for sure flip so she wouldn't have to use the idol. Like, the real idol. Because even then, if they split on her and Devin, her using the idol, they still lose yeah. if Devin gets voted off. She only wins if she gets Ben to flip with mm-hmm. them. So I think she was trying to pull out all the stops. And, you know, regardless, the, the whole plan was crazy enough that they put votes on Ben instead of Devin, which was pretty stupid, but I don't they did it anyways, so And then also, why did they pick Sarah to vote off? Um, and this is explained a little bit more, I think, in the beginning of the next episode. But Ben had told Lisa and Devin to vote for Sarah because and Lisa and Devin went with it because, like I said, their holy goal was just to do whatever vote with Ben. So there was three votes going on one person. And Ben told them to vote Sarah because Sarah was the least connected of mm-hmm. everybody else. You know, obviously, Cassie and Brady were in that cross tribe alliance, and for some reason, Ben liked Dylan more than Sarah. I I don't know. I don't okay. know why he said Sarah over Dylan. Maybe because he knew that Brady had more of a connection with Dylan. But also, I'm, I'm sure Brady had a, had a big influence on in that. Yeah. But then also, 
remember how Aliza almost played the idol for Devin? Do you know what was like going through her mind then? I don't know. That would have been really sad. Yeah, I wouldn't rough. She was like, I'm playing this for Devin. Uh no, I'm playing it for myself. <laughs> if, she, if she would have done that, oh my gosh, that would have been know. the worst. That would have been just as heartbreaking as the crowd. Crouch, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that would literally be like the Liz tribal. Dang. If Elisa would have had this whole plan, almost come off, play the idol for the wrong person mm-hmm. and go home. Brutal. That I, I actually love that this idol, this tribal in some ways, I think was kind of like redemption for the last one. Because it was almost exactly the same group of people, which is kind of crazy. It was four Tafitis, and then Elisa and Devin. The only people that weren't there were Chloe... Austin and Emily B. Mm-hmm. Other than that, everybody else is there. Yeah. So it was kind of like a rematch with like this after all this stuff had happened, but only this time Sabu Sabu came out on top. No, I so love I feel the like... shifts in power dynamics for sure. Yeah. Dang. Then the whispering. I, I don't think we've ever seen a live tribal happen in Survivor Michigan, have we? Maybe maybe in season one at some point, but mm-hmm. I don't know if we've ever had a tribal like this where there's like people whispering and changing their votes like that. I feel like there's one in season one with Cooper or something. Maybe when Cooper was <laughs> yeah. off. Oh yeah, why was Cooper? Why did Cooper lose his voice? What happened? Was there a football game? <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> so he probably was, he was to crying too much because he he's not able to see Crouch do his confessionals from his porch now. Yeah, so he was like crying all weekend. That's why yeah. he lost his oh, voice. Oh no, there, yeah, it's him and Crouch were just like chugging like shitty alcohol all weekend. It kind of just burned <laughs> up his throat. Like five dollar oh. tequila or something. Him and Crouch were chugging <laughs> together. I, I feel oh, like Kevin Crouch definitely had kind of like a Jeff Probst, Boston Rob sort of thing, you know. <laughs> oh, definitely. yeah. There's definitely a little bit of Coop Man Crouch on Crouch. <sighs> yep. So, we have, you know, we have so many questions about this tribal council that we're just going to need somebody who is there to help answer some of them. Yeah, I wonder who we could bring on. Yeah, I think we need, you know, there's all these talk about all these Emilys on this season. I think we need some more Sarahs up in here. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, at, we're at a minimum of Sarahs. Okay. okay, I don't know. I I'm, 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 don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Sarah, how's it Hello. going? I think that we're not going to be able to have Sarah Z on because she had, she can't join right now. But we still have us three. We still have, we replaced one Sarah yeah. with the other Sarah. But Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah <laughs> it, there's only room for one Sarah on this podcast. You know, two Sarahs would be too powerful. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Welcome our guest. We have here Sarah Menace. What's going on, Sarah? It's going. You know, um, I watched the episode actually this morning. I missed it last night, but yeah. I'm pretty happy with it, honestly. Yeah, how, how are you feeling about watching your whole cyber experience again? Um, I mean, <laughs> I think that people kind of like got me wrong, like uh, other cast members. But I'm I'm glad that they didn't just assume I was completely stupid about the game because that's the truth. But they were just like, "Oh my god, she's so good at the game," and I was like, "I've never seen Survivor before." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so. Sarah, what have you been up to since um, Survivor Michigan Season 3? It's been two years. Yeah, it's, it's been two years, so quite a lot, I guess. I'm still at Michigan going to school, you know. I work at Olive Garden. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. We have, like, a copyright thing on that. But, yeah, that's us, basically like, all I do. Sticks? Yeah, duh. That's, like, all I do is go to work it, and school. Is the Olive Garden back open? Are you, are you, it is, Are you yeah. slinging those breadsticks again? I am with a mask on for like nine hours a day. Oh yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it's annoying. So you've been keeping busy during uh, quarantine and everything. Yeah, I like moved home with my parents for a month or two, um, but then Olive Garden opened back up, so I'm back in Ann Arbor right now. Nice, nice. nice. You're you're a senior this year, right? I am. Yeah. Man, how time flies. You're, I know, you're, right? You're but a sophomore that knew nothing about Survivor. Now here you are watching the season play out on TV. Now, how yeah. crazy is it to like see yourself on TV <laughs> after after two years, like in a different time of your life? It's crazy to see myself, but I think it's more crazy to see like so many people that I've gotten to know so well in the past two years, and like they like they are just completely different. Like I've never seen this side <laughs> of them. Like it's so funny. 
<laughs> yeah, like you always end up with like friends with these people, like even that you weren't friends with in the game at all. Right, you know, exactly. And then you just see yeah. them like trash talking you or whatever in the game. You're like, right. what? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like honestly, my I would say my best survivor friend is Emily Paddock. And I don't know if you saw the episode, but she dragged my ass through the mud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but she's great. Like, I have never seen that, like, competitive, like, edge side of her. So I think it's kind of cool. Like, she's a, such a saint in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and just in survivor context, Paddock just turns it on. <laughs> yeah, she's so competitive. Yeah. That so she couldn't even throw the challenge after Ben had said he'd exactly. been bamboozled. I know. Yeah. This is like a little off topic, but a fun story. So she taught me how to make yarn earrings. And so she taught me how to make the first one. And then we were making the pair. And I got done with mine a little bit faster than her. And she was like visibly angry. And she was like, oh, my God, I need to control myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's you awesome. know, I do, th- I do think that's one of the things about Survivor is like, as much as it can be an intense experience, you do tend to learn things about yourself. Mm-hmm. Like even that, even the fact that, oh, wow, I'm more competitive than I really like, right. you know? But, yeah, I don't know. What do you think you came away from the experience with? Like, what do you think you learned? Like, you had any moments where you, like, learned something? You're like, wow, like, I didn't realize that about myself. Yeah, I definitely learned, like, I'm actually, like, kind of pretty good at making friends. Like, I just um, have this track record in the past of, like, people don't immediately like me. And, like, obviously you can see that happening, too, with, like, Chloe. She was like, I don't like her, but I don't know why. But, like, that's a common thing. (laughs) Um, yeah, I think it's like, a common I... thing with Chloe in general. But... <laughs> <laughs> when I walked in, like, I was super nervous. Like, the first day I was driving in my car to go to the challenge the first day. And I was like, oh, my God, should I even get out? She's freaking out because I'm not, like, very good at making friends. And then, like, I made friends. And I was like, are these people, like, just doing this for the game? And, like, most of them weren't. I was, like, shocked. <laughs> yeah. It, it is really a crazy thing to be playing a game where, like, you're not really sure what parts of the friendships are real mm-hmm. until out, after you're out of it, you know? Because right. I think you had a confessional earlier where you were talking, like, I, I know this is all going to be on YouTube later. Like, I want to be real. I don't want to be fake. And right. Because I, I think there is a lot of fakeness. And, you know, not to, like, say that it's a bad thing. People use that as their strategy, right? Like, mm-hmm. where they try to, like, oh, I need people to like me. I need to blah, 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 play the politics. But it makes it hard to tell what you can really believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I got some um, comments on YouTube about that comment, too, like, saying that I was also a mean girl. And I guess it, like, came out wrong. Um, like, I said, like, I didn't want to get to know Emily L., Um, because I didn't want to be fake and people like thought of that as like I didn't want to get to know her because everybody else had like this notion that she didn't belong in our group or whatever but it was mainly just me trying not to lie unnecessarily like I didn't want to befriend her and then stab her in the back the next day it just didn't make sense yeah because you said that you were pretty sure, like, at that point, it was pretty much a done deal that she was going to get voted off, right? Right, yeah. I did that confessional, like, five minutes before Tribal happened. Can you explain more about, like, the dynamics of, like, Tafiti and, like, leading up to that vote? Yeah, well, basically, we, like, exited the challenge. Uh, like, me, Cassie, and Dylan just happened to live in the same direction. So we walked away together, and then that kind of became, like, a alliance or whatever. And then also, like... I met with Brady that week. I don't think I met with Chloe that week, but I did meet with Brady and we all kind of talked about it. And I believe that Brady just told me like Chloe's on board to, to vote out Emily. I don't even exactly know why I think just because like the vibe was off, which is like such a stupid answer. Like that it's so like unstraightforward, but (laughs) that's just the truth. Like just the vibe was off. And yeah, so that's what we did with that. But it's so funny because like, the people I considered my closest allies in the game were just, like, because we lived in a similar direction. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I remember, like, it, 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 there wasn't really a ton of footage, uh, t- um, unfortunately, of, like, you and Dylan. Mm-hmm. But you two both did talk a lot about how, like, you were both each other's closest ally. I know. I noticed that, too. Like, we, we actually hung out, like, quite a few times outside of the game. Like, he would just come over to my house, and we'd, we'd talk game a little bit, but we'd just, like, get to know each other as well. And, like, we just never recorded those things. And, yeah, I don't know why. We also um, did an idol search together. But at that point, Brady had already found it. So we didn't find anything, obviously. But 
Yeah, we were super close, and I feel like that got conveyed with other people saying we need to break them up because they're so close, but, like, the audience never got to see it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things where, like, you know, you're watching it on a TV show, you're obviously not going to be able to see the full picture, Right. And this is the way that it is. You kind of have to do the best you can. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's that's no shade to the editing team. They did a fantastic job. Oh yeah, yeah. I was actually curious. We also saw that Cassie is part of this cross tribe alliance mm-hmm. with Brady and Chloe. Like, did Cassie ever tell it to you guys? Like, did you do you think like do you from your opinion do you think that Cassie was actually with you or with Brady? Because it seems like you can see there's a clear like Brady and Chloe, you and Dylan. Mm-hmm. and Cassie's very in the middle like mm-hmm. d- how did you view that whole thing like what what was going on with that during the game I definitely thought that Cassie was more with us than with Brady and Chloe but honestly watching back the footage like I didn't really know how how many meetings she had had with the two of them or I didn't even know about the cross tribe alliance so yeah I, I don't know what her true intentions were she did text me actually um, in the group chat and say something like, "Cause we didn't we didn't really uh, film anything either, like together. Like we had a relationship as well that people didn't get to see." And she said something like, "I like Sarah. Like she was like my closest ally in the game at that point." And I was like, "Oh, I was." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice to find that out now, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Two years later. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to last week. Um... What what were some of your thoughts and reactions to what happened during that uh, that crazy rocks travel? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you look at my face at any point during that travel, I'm literally like looking into the camera like I'm on the office. Like, <laughs> oh my god! And they were just going back and forth, and they were on either side of me, and I was like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. I'm right in the middle. Like, and um, honestly, like the the reason I didn't flip that week, like. I kind of wish I did, but first of all, they voted for Cassie, which I didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. And um, also, I knew that there was some type of thing going on with Tormenta and Tafiti. I didn't know like there's like the the Alliance of Six or whatever, but um, I knew that we were kind of like working together. So if I would have flipped with Sabu Sabu, I would have been picked off one by one like they were planning to do to the rest of them. So it just didn't seem to play in my advantage, but I don't know. So you don't think if it was like somebody other than Cassie, they put votes on you, you would have flipped like what if it was Chloe? I had discussed that with Aliza about if I were to flip, she would be the person most likely to, that I would flip on. But even then I don't think I would have, because I still would have been at the bottom of a 10 person Alliance, like, or on the opposing side of them. And they would be just, like, coming for me. So I just didn't, I don't know. I don't see the um, advantage. But do you think that, like, people would blame you for not wanting to go to Rocks, though? And, like, you still had Dylan and Cassie on your side to an extent. Like, do you... Yeah. Like, you just didn't want to put a target on yourself? Yeah, definitely. I think, though, if they would have voted for Chloe and it would have been between Chloe and Austin and Andrew had pitched his coin flip idea, I would have been way more open to that. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Yeah, I was surprised that a lot that to be that you guys pretty much like dismissed the coin flip thing pretty quick. Yeah, I think just because like for me, I dismissed it because I didn't want Cassie to go. And I also didn't want Austin to go. Yeah. Like I said in my the votes down i said that we voted for him because we were planning on going to rocks and we didn't want to see him go so oh yeah that's true yeah. why, why did you tell everybody at the party that you dylan and cassie had an alliance <laughs> okay <laughs> I, <laughs> I mentioned this in uh in a youtube comment but if, if people didn't see it i don't watch survivor i don't know how to play i didn't know you weren't supposed to talk about your alliances you, so you just thought like, oh, this is the thing you talk about. Yeah, right? you just like, yeah, like this like, is my like, alliance. What's yours? Yeah. I was just getting to know people at the yeah. party, and I was just trying to like make friends through a student org, and I did. I had no idea people were going to be so cutthroat about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Erin. As soon as you told her, she was like, "You don't tell people <laughs> those kind of things." <laughs> then and you was, will. You- well, yeah. someone should have told me that. <laughs> yeah rip. See, it did become a pretty major source of drama for the episode of like oh sarah versus chloe like what's gonna happen yes, and they, they tried to use that you know to make you guys flip on each other exactly it did and people still like to this day will say stuff about like oh what was with you and chloe's beef in season three and i was like 
uh, imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I don't man. Know, apparently she had beef with me though because she doesn't like me. But that's okay. <laughs> Oh, it's all man. in the context of the game. So, speaking of Chloe, or I guess not Chloe, but like Chloe and Cassie, were you surprised at all that Devin and Elisa end up voting for you instead of Cassie? It seemed like that's what you said in your like ending vote confessional. Yeah, I definitely was. Especially like how um, she kind of went off on them at Tribal the week before that. And like, it, I don't know, it just seemed like they had this idea that she didn't want to be there and that she didn't want to play but then like watching it back like having a power duo like me and dylan i understand like wanting to split us up yeah i don't know it honestly is are you i mean are you, are you still confused to this day about how why you got voted off at the tribal council no actually um i spoke with some people like at the the after party for season three and, like, Ben told me that he was the one at Tribal, like, when you see him whisper to Elisa, like, vote for Sarah. That's, like, literally what he said to her. Yeah. Um, so, Elisa told me that Ben was the one that told her to vote me. So, then I talked to Ben, and I was like, why'd you tell him to vote for me? And he said, Brady told me. So, then I went to Brady, and I was like, you told Ben to tell Elisa to vote for me? And he said, uh-huh. <laughs> I, was I like, guess... Okay. <laughs> Was Brady closer with Dylan than he was with you at, in the game at that time? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I don't even know if they had, like, a confessional. Like, I can't remember watching a confessional with just the two of them right now. I have no idea. Like, I do know Brady has some videos where he was like, yeah, you need to keep me and Dylan around for challenges. Right, yeah. So I'm guessing maybe that was part of it i guess actually you know what brady was a little bit sus of you ever since you know you told you had the whole thing of like where you you're here where he knew that you had been telling people that you right. thought him and chloe were playing too hard yeah which i mean true <laughs> so I, I you know regardless of yeah so i feel like maybe that would make sense as to how he would have less trust in you than dylan after yeah. like hearing that stuff mm-hmm. i remember in the moment when i watched that even like re-watching the episode it's just like is you getting voted off was just such a like out of left field like I the know. last thing I expected out of everybody like you know I, I could have seen Devin or Lisa or Ben or Brady and even Dylan's name had been brought up mm-hmm. but you were like the one name that hadn't been brought up by anybody and I you know. were the one that was voted off like that that just was crazy yeah watching that episode back like if I didn't know what happened as an audience member I'd probably be sitting there like okay I'm confused yeah <laughs> And that was me at Tribal, too. Like, when they read my, like, the first name, obviously, um, I knew that, like, Devin and Lisa were going to vote together. So whoever the first vote of theirs was going to be would be the second one. They, he read the first one, and I was like, what? Like, excuse me? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and then I was kind of like, uh, why? Like, I'm not good at challenges. I don't know how to play this game. Why? And apparently <laughs> it was Brady's fault. Yeah. I think Brady really is playing. Up until this point, he's been playing a very good, a very strong game. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I'm surprised that he hasn't really been tossed out as someone that people want to vote out, even though he's had a pretty, po- has had a leadership spot in his tribe. He's found an idol. He's yeah. done a lot of stuff. He has a lot of alliances. Yeah, I, I feel like par- partially is because, like, he is not playing as much of, like, the villainous out there persona as a lot of people on his tribe. Like, Mm -hmm. not that even you were at all, really, but... With Brady, he was the type of person that I knew if we were sitting together in the end, he'd 100% beat me, but I wanted to get, like, close, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I I would take him to, like, final six, and that's it. Like, he was a person I'd like to work with in the beginning and then, like, turn on eventually. So do you feel pretty tight with all Tafiti in general? Yeah, I think I did. Like, I I mean, we went to rocks for each other, so yeah. that was crazy. We did that, like, week two of... Uh, uh, e- yeah, that, going that's to- pretty tight. <laughs> I think regardless of the dysfunction, if anyone would have not wanted to go to rocks and flipped, they would have, like, everyone kind of knew about this alliance between uh, Tafiti and Tormenta trying to take down Savu Savu. So it was, it was just, like not advantageous for anyone on Tafiti to Mm -hmm. flip. Yeah, that makes sense. I took a 12.5% chance of going home that week, then a 100% chance of going home the next week. 
yeah, any things like after watching the episodes, anything from your gameplay that you feel like you wasn't represented as much? Like what what things like or what's the main things that weren't shown in the edit that you think were important for your game? I think the the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is like because Chloe in the first episode said like, oh, she knows the game so well. And then like it kind of just became like at the party, she became a rat, blah, blah, blah. Like if they would have had the piece of information that I don't know what I'm doing and I didn't know you weren't <laughs> supposed to do that. I feel like that's kind of important to like realize that I'm just like stupid. I, I wasn't doing it on purpose. <laughs> Watching your videos. I don't know if I really even had an idea that you never didn't know anything about Survivor. Because you seem like you picked up on it pretty quickly. Yeah, well, obviously I didn't, but... <laughs> it's so funny because, like, so many of my friends, like, even in just, like, general life, are like, dude, you just, like, have it together. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> I just, like, I'm so good at pretending that I know what I'm doing when I never do. It's funny, our friend Adam... Oh, what was it? He's like, oh, yeah, Sarah is so iconic that it took two idols to take her out. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Technically four, if you want to think about it. There's yeah, four true, idols played. True. Yeah, that's true. Almost five. If Brady would have played his idol for you, there would have been no ca- no votes cast. That would have been pretty great. That would have been wild. Yeah, wait, what happens? Everybody just votes again? Yeah. Well, you you could not vote for Eliza or you or Ben. So Devin right. probably you could vote out? You yeah, definitely Devin would have been voted yeah. out. Yeah, that- Missed opportunity from Brady. <laughs> Catch me on the online games, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All righty. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been great. All righty. All right. Bye. All righty. That was great. I, I still do. I, I still am just like so blindsided by the fact that Sarah got voted off in this episode. Yeah. Like, it's just so random. Yeah, what? It was so random. And like, you even just as like producers going to this travel council, like I feel like none of us thought that would be Sarah going home. <laughs> uh, do we want? Do we want to eulogize Sarah? Yeah, sure. I, what I like, I, I appreciate that she was a very real person on the show. I'm, you know, I wish that we had gotten to see more of her because, like, her it was interesting seeing her lack of knowledge, but also like she was kind of savvy for how the game works. So oh yeah, definitely. It, it kind of, she was definitely she was doing things. But also making mistakes, so it was kind of interesting to watch this whole like, oh, she's telling people about her alliances. Mm-hmm. She might flip. She might not flip. This whole thing. But um, and, and I love the I dynamic like, I of like people thinking you know the game when really you don't. <laughs> like that's just kind yeah. of so that's like a fun thing. Like it's one thing to, like go in as a super fan. Everybody's like, oh, this person's a super fan. It's another thing to like you know go in with like Mallory level knowledge of the game. Well, you know, she maybe knew yeah. more than Mallory, but like. And people thinking yeah. that she's some, um, you know, Whale or Ben or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Like, I feel like that was really interesting to watch. I honestly think she set herself up decently well in that, like, she had a tight alliance with Dylan, and she's decently close with Cassie and Brady, and, like, she's in this tormented to feed alliance. Mm-hmm. She was in the majority. Like, it took this freak, like, four, two fake idols, two real idols, and a botched split plan to take her out. I think otherwise she would have done pretty well. Oh yeah, definitely. But like, I feel like if she, if she hadn't been so sketchy last episode, Brady and Ben might have been more inclined to like save her. Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like that's kind. Of, I feel like you can ultimately kind of see that her game came down to like, Lisa and Devin voted for her because they didn't have a good relationship with her. Brit and Brady, like, was willing to sacrifice her because like, she'd already kind of publicly thrown his name out. Some of those like sloppy mistakes she made last episode came back to bite her like sooner than they probably should have. Yeah, but they still did. But when a with like a crazy season like Maze and Confused, you know, we always gotta, you know, it's hard to make any mistakes. You gotta be in your toes in the season. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Where does she rank in the fifth boot pantheon? So we have Sarah from season three. We have Kevin from season two, and we have Jess from season one. I think that we have Kevin over Jess yeah, previously. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty comfortable in putting Sarah over Kevin in that Sarah didn't have any, anywhere as near big part of in her going home as Kevin did in blowing up his own game, you know? That's true, yeah. I definitely, I definitely would put her above Jess. Jess isn't going to even apologize for not yeah. playing this game. You know what? Yeah, I'm not going to apologize for putting Sarah above either of them, actually. <laughs> I, I like that Jess, you know, Jess and Sarah, they both have a very non-apologetic, they're real people yeah, yeah. kind of attitude. But 
and Kevin, all, all three of them actually, you know, Kevin, Kevin is very much Kevin. Mm-hmm. Kevin knew much more about the game and he had much more power, but he also like made much worse yeah. mistakes. You know, I don't care. Kind of blew up his- yeah, no, it's not, like, I don't care if like, if you're like super good at the game, if you also, or you know a lot about the game, if you just completely blow up your spot, like Kevin did, like, I feel like that still means you're done pretty poorly in the game. Whereas, you know, Sarah definitely made mistakes, but like, you know, going to the travel council, nobody thought that she was going to be the one going home. That's true. Okay. Kevin <laughs> did find an idol. He did pull off a blind side of Daniel, and he controlled old Cerulean. Like, mm-hmm. he had a lot of power in the pre-merge, but he just totally, like, overplayed it, his hand, played this weird fake idol, got voted off with an idol in his pocket. Like, he should have seen it coming from miles away. Whereas Sarah got blindsided, but, like, she, and she really didn't do anything to deserve to be blindsided. Yeah. Running both of their seasons a hundred times, I think Sarah usually makes it further than Kevin. That's, that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's I feel like Kevin true. will yeah. always end up blowing up his game where there's a lot of instances I can see Sarah getting into a solid like, alliance like she had with a Dylan and surviving this vote and then like, getting into a pretty solid position in the merge where not a lot of people maybe were, would be targeting her. That's that's a good case, you know. I'll buy that. I I, I definitely like the if you simulate this a hundred times. Yeah. Argument. I think that's a good. I think it's a good case. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I I can see that. So we're gonna put Sarah over Kevin, over Jeff. They get, yeah, they get know, better not, every season. Yeah, I'm not gonna apologize. I'm not gonna apologize for this ranking. This is the first time with me. It's just been me and you in this podcast. I think. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Ever? Well, that, that's just me and you. I think so. I don't know. Uh, we, we can get the, the KYTL heads. So they'll know. It's good times. It reminds me of of, of, uh, of our good times eating eating tofu yeah. in the Union. Yeah, I actually and... just bought tofu the other day, and I, I, I literally thought of that. I'm like, because <laughs> Kat wanted to make tofu for some recipe, and I'm like, God, like, the last time I had tofu, like, I just had a little bite of Sam's, so and I almost threw up. You know, if you cook it and add seasoning to it, it makes it much better. All right. I'll say that. We'll see. We'll see. I'll report back next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Tune in next week. We will have another wild episode of Maze and Confused to talk about. All of them are wild. Let's be honest. They're all going to be awesome. This season's great. It really is. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yep. Goodbye. See ya.